Hello and welcome to Mofo RC Garage. Or if you're watching the one video version of this, welcome back to Mofo RC Garage. This is the magical molding of the videos together I was talking about for the second part installation where we will install the wheels and mount them up. These are the UPW wheels or ultra premium wheels from Mofo RC. And these are the Super Duty black rings. These can be ran this direction with the little chamfer hole showing or you can run them that way if you just want a big fat solid black ring. Uh, I'm not sure what which way I'll go yet. Uh, gosh, which way do I want to go with these? I think I might just run the big fat black solid ring on this one. I think that looks kind of cool. Especially with the yellow Jeep, it's kind of blacked out already. So maybe I'll just run them that way. So first off, we're just going to go ahead and take one of these assemblies here and um, and the hubs since this is the UPW and not the DDP the DDP you can install um, only using the main hub screws for the installation of the beadlock itself the UPW with the larger rings like this you actually have to install them via the outer ring screws so I will show you exactly what I'm talking about here I'm going to go ahead and put the ring inside the tire, make sure it is all in there nice and straight just by kind of fondling it, squeezing light pressure here, there, whatever. When it feels like it's pretty much in there straight, it's probably good. Uh, these two halves of the wheel, you're going to want to kind of go through, line up the holes until everything lines up. Hopefully you can see that. You can see that all those little holes are lined up. If I turn it, they're not lined up. Now they are lined up. I'm going to put the hub in the back of it. These are the plus three hubs. Uh, I also have plus six and I also have zero hubs. And uh, when you purchase the wheels you can choose whichever ones you want or desire and if you also want to or desire you can purchase a second or even a third set uh, individually from the store of the three or the six or the zeros later on if you wanted you could also purchase different rings for these wheels in the store as well and kind of make your you know if you if you make your choice of which ones you like best if you have one style of ring and maybe you want to try a different style you can buy just the rings and just swap the rings out just like you can change the hubs just by swapping out the hubs so you're not stuck with the same wheel when you buy these wheels. You can kind of change them up to be uh, any of the current ones. Uh, any of the current rings I have will fit. Also, uh, if you wanted to be creative, you could probably 3D print your own rings for them. And in the future, I'll probably have even more designs of rings. Right now, I do have a uh, black wheel being manufactured as well. It is not out yet, but maybe if you're watching this video at a later date the black wheel will be available I also have these little hubs being manufactured in brass right now they are not available yet but those will be available in brass pretty shortly maybe the next uh, three weeks maybe a month we we'll just kind of see how long it takes for them to finish that okay so that one wheel and hub is assembled now. Um, now I'm just going to stick it right through the tire here and these are, let's see, these are directional. So I'm going to call this a right side tire. I'm going to slide that right through there. I'm going to set this ring on here and kind of look through the hole, see if I can't see where they're going to be lining up. And uh, let's see, as I'm looking at this, here's my little bag of screws that comes with it. Maybe I will do the, yeah, maybe I will do the silver holes instead. I was thinking I was going to do the black holes, or the black flat fat ring. But I think I might actually do the silver holes uh, chamfers here on the out. So I'm going to kind of just get one of these started a little bit. And then kind of push it around until I figure out exactly where it's going. And uh, don't smash that screw in all the way or you'll never get this thing to line up or go in or go together. 
And these are probably some of the easiest wheels that have um, rings like this that you have to install. These are probably going to be some of the easiest to install of a style of wheel like this. Uh, you only have to install the one outer ring. You don't have to install an inner one. There's no clearance issues from on the inside from the inner ring hanging down or big screws sticking out of the back or anything like that. So you can still fit brass parts inside here. Uh, you know, bigger knuckles, portals, whatever else you want to run with this. You're going to have a lot of options there as well. And as I'm putting these in, I'm not tightening them all the way. I'm just kind of getting each one a little bit snug right now. Then I'm going to go back, make sure the bead is seated on both sides where I want it to be. And uh, then I will slowly kind of in a star pattern, make sure all of the thing, all of the uh, screws are in all the way. I'm going to peel out just a little bit on here to pull that bead where it needs to be. Now that I've got these kind of barely snugged in there, just to where I can start to see the inner bead pop a little bit out of there. Same thing on the back side, just starting to see the inner bead part. You'll know kind of what I'm talking about if you're doing this at home. You'll start to see the little crevasse on the inside open up, and then you'll know you pretty much got it where you want it. And then you can start to kind of snug these up in that star pattern I was talking about. Once you get the bead into the proper channel that it goes into. Uh, don't snug any of them up on its own all the way. Kind of go in that star pattern, just lightly sinking them a little bit further each time. And uh, just like anything else with these tiny little screws, do not over tighten them or you will probably strip them out. Okay, it feels like we are at the rock bottom where this is going to be stopping. Try not to squeeze the tire while you're putting these together either like I'm doing right now, or you'll actually squeeze the air out of it and the air will never come back in on its own unless you puncture a hole in the tire or if you vent them. Uh, the easy way to vent these, um, just take this ring drill a few holes right in the middle of the ring you know maybe three or two or three or four of them just through the ring in random spots uh, and then when you put it together the wheel won't be completely airtight so it will be able to unvent you know vent and unvent on it as you squish it um, you could also drill a hole on the inner part of this wheel if you wanted you could drill one or maybe two little holes in the inner part to let more air escape if you do plan on running like a serious vent in them. And so um, I'll probably just go ahead and install one wheel on camera so this video doesn't take 20 hours. And then uh, I'll hit pause, do some magic, and the rest of the wheels will be magically installed and on the vehicle. Now I can actually, I'm just going around in a star and I am lightly, lightly snugging all of these as I go because they are all bottomed out now. The ring is on, it's on as far as it's going to go. I do not need to kind of go back around and retorque everything, although it might be a good idea once you get every screw in to go back and recheck them all. I probably won't just for the sake of time, but we'll see drop that one. You can also use a, uh, you know, black screws. If you have black screws for these, uh, you can also put black screws in if you wanted black screws with any set of rings you're putting on. Um, I don't currently have enough black screws to sell you to install these, but you could probably find enough black screws somewhere. And uh, these are 1.4 millimeter by five millimeter long screws. So anywhere you can find a 1.4 millimeter by 5 millimeter black screw, you could use those as well. Such as the stock ones, you could use the stock screws if you have enough stock screws laying around. But you do need quite a few of them. 
So here's that one wheel assembled now. And you can see the hub sticking out here. That is a three millimeter hub. The zero millimeter hub will uh, bring the wheel inset more. So it's kind of closer towards the middle of the wheel. The three millimeter pretty much puts it right at the very back of the wheel. The six millimeter actually brings it out further than the back of the wheel uh, for spacing. So here is that wheel. Let's go ahead and slide it onto the hex right here. There is that one wheel installed there on the wheel on the uh, axle, and uh, I do have some fancy little red hubs I'm going to put on these. These little red hubs are also available when you purchase the wheels, or you can buy them separately as well, and they're not too expensive either at the moment. That could change in the future. Right now, I think they're. Uh, I think I've got them for thirteen ninety nine right now. Just be careful when you put the little tool that comes with it on there. You don't want to smash or break the little tool because it only comes with one tool. Um, and if you break that little tool, I don't really have any extra tools unless you want to buy a whole other set of hubs. So if you just tighten this all the way, um, it's going to be over tightened. Just like any SCX24 wheel nut, if anyone's ever taken one off and put it back on, once you put it on all the way, back it off until it can do this. You want it to be able to freely move just like that and not have any tension on it so you don't have any binding causing your little motor to overheat and burn up. Now getting the little tool off, I'm going to put this back on and kind of wiggle it back and forth and pull it right out. So there's that wheel with the little red hub on the inside installed. These little red hubs, I also have black ones. They have a built-in, this is aluminum, with a built-in nylock steel nut, stainless steel nut on the inside, with the nylon lock nut in it. So these are just like a nylon lock nut wheel nut, but they are cool looking in aluminum and red or black. So that is that. With this one on, I'm going to do some magic, hit pause, and when I come back, I'm going to have four wheels on this and a body. Okay, and now we have all four wheels assembled. I did not install the last wheel yet, nor have I put the body back on, because this is also going to be two parts of two different videos. If you're watching the other video, we are getting ready to put the body on, which means putting on the last two screws that hold on the rear uh, shock plates, the aluminum shock plates. We're going to install that. We're also going to check out the new wheels we just installed. And we're going to go ahead and get this out of the way real quick. Let's just kind of see what the weight difference is between a stock wheel and tire and the Mopo RC UPW. So stock wheel and tire, we are looking at about 11 grams. UPW wheel and tire, 28. So you get an extra 14 grams of weight per wheel. Um, and this is just an RC four-wheel drive tire, approximately the same size as the Jeep wheel and tire that comes stock or the deadbolt. So let's go ahead and put this back here. So real good, easy modification, not only for looks, but also for functional weight added to the vehicle, uh, the Mopo RC. UPW or DDP wheels. Let's go ahead and put on the body first. And the last two screws for the aluminum shock plates. Those will go through the shock plate into, um, <clears throat> into the frame and then into the actual bumper mount there and uh, for these I would recommend a longer screw for sure if you have one available uh, at least a six millimeter uh, or if you have one maybe even an eight millimeter screw to run through there just to help hold that bumper out a little better because you kind of running out of meat back here and don't use this tool to do that either like a giant gorilla like I'm doing here let me get my handheld tool. And 
and screw that right down. I'm going to go ahead and snug up these front screws now just a little bit, make sure they're tight. Okay, we now have the body on. Let's put that last wheel on, as well as the fancy little red fake hub, which is very nice, by the way. Uh, they come in black or red. They are aluminum with a steel nylon lock nut built inside of there to hold everything together and not come loose. And uh, again, make sure your wheel can freely rotate after you put the little nut on. And sometimes you might need a pair of needle nose pliers to grab that little tool and pull it back out if it doesn't come out with your four millimeter wrench. Okay, here we have the finished Jeep with the flex blades on it, aluminum shock towers, and the UPW wheels with the plus three millimeter extensions built into the wheel hub. So as you can see the extra width and stance we've gained just by installing some good looking wheels which also add weight to the vehicle. And let's check out that flex. Let's try two tires first, see how it does. Two tires with the flex blades and the aluminum shock plates. No problem. Let's try three. Three tires. No problem. Will it make four? I don't know. Let's find out. Probably not, because four is a lot of tires, and these are the standard flex blades, not the XRs. So you can see with the standard flex blades, it's super close to making four tires worth of flex, but it doesn't. If these were the XRs, that would probably get the full fourth tire worth of flex in there, but you can see how much that does gain just from stock to now here. It probably about did probably do about three and a half tires. Same thing in the front, maybe three and a half, four tires in the front. So there she is. I appreciate you watching. Have a good night, and I love you.